So what I've got here on the bench then is a small 5.8 gigahertz uh, transmitter, really tiny little thing. Uh, these are quite cheap on eBay and uh, there seems to be a lot of people selling these now so they seem uh, really really popular but uh, originally what I was uh, doing is uh, shooting a video just to see how well a uh, 4 watt 5.8 gigahertz uh, amplifier works with uh, something like this and you know whether you, you actually get 4 watts out of it but um, I was getting some inconsistent results and uh, I found out that it was this little transmitter that was giving me the inconsistent results now what was happening is uh, this little transmitter has got no kind of heat sink on it whatsoever and it's a 200 milliwatt transmitter and when you first turn it on it outputs about uh, 210 milliwatts but as soon as it warms up that uh, performance drops significantly to about uh, 160 milliwatts and uh, it does get extremely hot and heat uh, is a big problem with uh, RF components you want to try and get rid of it as much as possible because it can significantly uh, affect the uh, performance of say a uh, RF amplifier transmitter uh, something like that uh, routers you know if you position them uh, above a radiator in your house for it for example it can uh, significantly uh, you know impair the performance of that router and just by moving it into a cooler position in your room you can uh, you know effectively uh, increase its range by quite a bit and a lot of people uh, you know don't realize this but uh, this little transmitter it's as cheap as chips you can get them on eBay uh, you know it seems to be flooded with these at the moment but uh, without a heat sink it does get extremely hot so what I've got set up here is uh, an experiment to show you the performance drop as it gets hot so I'm going to uh, monitor the temperature of this with the multimeter here I've got an attenuator here it's a uh, programmable attenuator basically it's got uh, little relay switches inside here and when I put 12 volts into it it uh, activates uh, the switches and uh, gives me up to uh, 70 uh, dBm attenuation so it's a really nice thing to have in the lab because you know rather than having uh, multiple components uh, I can just use this and apply a voltage on each one of those switches depending how much attenuation I want and uh, I'm also using the power meter here this one I can hook up to the uh, laptop so you know I can uh, put a screenshot in here uh, capture it and uh, you can also you know save your uh, output onto uh, the laptop rather than using one of the bigger ones the uh, older ones that I've got trying to get that into uh, the shot with the video camera all at the same time so uh, what I'm going to do then is first of all uh, power up the transmitter so we can monitor its output and then uh, as it warms up we'll see that output drop drop significantly and then we'll look at some things we can do to uh, try and rectify that and make this a little bit more stable so at the moment the multimeter is uh, registering about uh, 27.5 degrees C so it's about room temperature so what I'll do I'll apply some power to the little transmitter and then we can monitor the uh, output and we can see how it does start to drop off significantly once it starts to get into about 50 degrees C So it's getting up to 30 degrees C and it is operating around 200 milliwatts now. So now we're at 45 degrees C and as you can see it's about uh, you know 180 milliwatts. as it gets hotter it just keeps dropping so we're now at uh, around 170 milliwatts and uh, 53 degrees C so now we're up at 58 degrees C 59 degrees C and as you can see it's operating at about 100 and uh, 60 milliwatts so it has dropped off significantly and uh, also 
this uh, operating at such a high temperature it's not going to last long it won't be long before this uh, fails and uh, you know we have to buy a new one because uh, operating at such a high temperature it's not really good for those components that are in this and it's only a cheap little transmitter as well so the components are not going to be quality components that could handle that kind of heat and the heat is just climbing and climbing and as you can see it's uh, still dropping it's now into the uh, one and a half milliwatts range now before we uh, start looking at ways that we can help uh, improve the performance of this by adding some kind of heat sink or something along that lines and uh, you know extend its life a little bit as well probably uh, I thought would you know it's a good idea and it'll be fun just to uh, see and double check and make sure that it is the heat problem that's causing the uh, drop in performance so I've got this little experiment set up here I've uh, built up a uh, little trough on top um, of the uh, shield there on here and I've built the sides up a little bit and uh, it's probably still going to leak everywhere but uh, I'm going to use some poor man's uh, liquid nitrogen very difficult to get hold of uh, things like that in the UK uh, you know dry ice you can buy it in the uh, supermarket in the states I believe but uh, anything like that in this country it's difficult to get hold of so I'm going to use uh, some poor man's liquid nitrogen uh, this is uh, butane um, lighter gas uh, refilled fluid and uh, you can get this uh, really easily in this country and uh, you know you can use an air duster as well but uh, I haven't got one here in the lab but butane gas is the propellant that's used in uh, an air duster um, again you know you've got to be really careful with this stuff so it's well ventilated here in the lab no naked flames because what I'm going to do I'm going to use this uh, container here which is the top of a uh, LED uh, light bulb and uh, what I can do is fit this into here press it down and uh, then build up some liquid in the bottom here and then just pour it into my little trough and I've got a little V cut out here hopefully we're not going to get it everywhere and hopefully we'll see it cool down rapidly and uh, the performance jump back up let it warm up again and then uh, the performance will uh, go down again and that'll just verify that uh, it is certainly a heat problem that's uh, causing the problems with this little transmitter so exactly the same as before then apply power to the transmitter and then allow that heat to build up so I think that's uh, hot enough for our purposes anyway it's around uh, you know 1.5 milliwatts now and uh, 57.5 degrees C so let's try and cool it down a little bit and see if we increase its output uh, its power output back up to uh, how it was originally when we started it cold So I'll take my uh, butane here a little bit more So it's at minus nine and we're back up to its uh, original operating temperature that it was when it was cold. So let it, uh, let's see if we can let it warm up again and then see if it starts to drop again around the uh, 30 degree mark. So 30 to 40 uh, degrees C, it's extremely stable. And once we get into the 50s then it starts to drop again to around 
uh, 5 milliwatts or uh, 115 milliwatts sorry so uh, what we're going to need to do then is add some kind of heat sink to this to try and make it more stable and uh, you know give a an average output of around uh, you know 180 milliwatts will be fine I'd be happy with that a uh, little bit of cooling as well obviously when you're using it on a quadcopter but because there's no heat sink on here it's not going to be really efficient just trying to cool down the shielding so uh, let me have a look and see if we can find some kind of heat sink that we can put on this and then test it again to see if it's uh, effective in any way so obviously we're going to have to go with some kind of heat sink then this uh, one here is uh, another typical one you can get off ebay quite popular and uh, you know pretty cheap as well it's about double the price of uh, this little one here but you can see we've got this big heat sink on here and uh, it is chunkier and heavier you know uh, not just the heat sink the uh, entire thing as well it's a lot heavier than this uh, small one here and also the components on this the you know you don't have to be uh, an electrical engineer to know that uh, you know these components are uh, bigger chunkier they're going to uh, you know be able to handle the voltage uh, a lot better than the components in here they're going to last longer and not burn out uh, because these transmitters as well work over a uh, wide range of uh, voltage from uh, 7 volts I believe right up to about 18 19 volts so uh, you can just see by looking at this that it's uh, a lot uh, you know it's more uh, well made and uh, definitely can handle the higher currents and uh, higher amperages uh, again I don't know uh, the components whether they're the cheap end uh, you know uh, manufacturers but uh, definitely just judging the, by the size of the components you can tell it's made to uh, handle the uh, higher voltages and probably uh, outlast uh, this one as well especially if we don't put uh, some kind of heat sink on there so this is the uh, heat sink that I'm going to use it's not very heavy at all and I've got this out of a uh, old uh, router you can buy these uh, on eBay you can buy packs of these you know different sizes uh, for uh, not a great deal of money from China I have got a pack of these somewhere with uh, different sizes in but at the moment I can't uh, uh, find it here in my lab so I've taken this off an old router and uh, it is about the right size to fit on here so what I'm going to do before I fit it, I'm going to get rid of this uh, black paint on this side just so we can make the most of the uh, heat sink, uh, you know, most efficient use of the heat sink so we've got metal touching metal. Now to hold the heat sink in place I'm going to be using uh, this paste here which uh, once it warms up also acts as a glue as well so it should do a good enough job holding this in place. So now that we've got a heat sink on there, let's see if it's uh, improved things a little bit by putting that heat sink on there and uh, in particular making it a lot more stable. So the temperature is about uh, 34 degrees C and we're at uh, 220 milliwatts so it seems to be a little bit more stable than it was originally just by putting that heat sink on there but we'll see what it's like when it uh, warms up a little bit. So we're into the 40s now and it definitely seems more stable it's uh, holding its own there at uh, around 220 milliwatts so we're not seeing that massive drop uh, that we saw originally at least uh, not in the first uh, minute or so so definitely doing its job and it seems to be uh, you know holding its own a lot better than it did previously. So the temperature is still climbing but at a much slower rate than it did previously and you can see by the output power it's uh, definitely more stable it's definitely in the uh, 200 milliwatts that uh, this is supposed to run at anyway so you know it looks like it's doing the job and especially you know if you've got this uh, connected to your quadcopter and you're flying around and getting some uh, airflow in between these uh, fins here then it's definitely going to keep it uh, cooler and uh, you know make it last uh, a lot longer as well rather than uh, getting uh, so hot that uh, you end up burning the thing out
so we're at five minutes now it's been running for five minutes here on the bench we're almost at 50 degrees C but it's still holding its own at uh, around 200 milliwatts so we've definitely improved things by a vast amount by adding this heatsink So we're almost coming up to the uh, 10 minute mark now and uh, what you can see there we're in the uh, low 50s 51 almost 52 degrees C and it's certainly uh, holding its uh, output now at around 200 milliwatts it's a lot more stable than it originally was and uh, you can see now the vast improvement that you can get by just adding a cheap little uh, heat sink like this or just repurposing one out of an old uh, router or something similar definitely improve the uh, performance of this little transmitter and because we're not getting uh, the vast amount of heat there into the uh, 60 degrees it's going to last a lot longer as well now because I've got this set up here on the bench I just want to do one final check and that is to reduce the uh, voltage that we operate this transmitter on and uh, reduce it down to uh, 7 volts this operates from 7 volts up to 18 volts I believe but uh, so far I've been running it at 12 volts a uh, easy way to get rid of some heat with this would be to run it at uh, slightly lower down towards the uh, 7 volts its minimum operating temperature that would get rid of uh, quite a lot of heat but uh, I just want to reduce it down I'm going to start off at 12 volts and uh, see if it uh, reduces the uh, output wattage of this uh, little uh, transmitter to see if it drops way below the uh, 200 milliwatts that uh, it outputs for instance so I'll start it up on 12 and then I'll uh, count down as I go down uh, you know one at a time till we get down to 7 volts and then take it a little bit lower than that and see if uh, you know what its minimum uh, operating voltage is so we're on 12 volts then it's uh, really really cool at the moment and it's operating at uh, uh, 218 milli uh, watts there so not too bad at all so I'll start turning it down now we're at 10 volts now we're at 8 that's 7 so that's dropped down significantly 7 volts it's it's that is that is its uh, minimum operating voltage and we had a major drop when we went down to seven, 7 volts so I'll just take it back up to 8 again and now it's jumped back up so if you uh, do run this at its minimum uh, operating voltage you're going to have some uh, significant power loss there I'll just uh, take that back down to 7 see if we can uh, verify that again And you can see there it's dropped significantly so you don't want to be operating uh, this transmitter at anything less than uh, 8 volts really if you want the uh, maximum output that is anyway but definitely operating it at 8 volts is going to run a lot cooler and with that heatsink on there as well uh, it should perform a lot better than it did originally so I hope you found this uh, video useful it certainly was not the uh, video I intended to shoot when I woke up this morning I was uh, shooting a video on uh, this here which is a uh, 4 watt amplifier for 5.8 gigahertz and it is a bit of a beast it's got quite a bit of weight to it but uh, because I was getting some strange results and uh, you know it, I was getting a different reading each time and uh, it turned out to be this and uh, hopefully I've shown you how uh, heat can seriously affect the performance of uh, something like this but uh, a simple fix you know you don't even have to go out and buy anything if you've got a couple of scrap routers lying around and uh, you know it's turned it into a much more stable transmitter and uh, definitely you can pick these up for around £10 on eBay they're as cheap as anything now and uh, again the uh, input voltage if you let it drop too low then uh, you know it's going to hit the performance of this uh, little transmitter but again if you can find a balance and have uh, a much lower voltage around 8 volts 8.5 volts 
you haven't got as much current uh, going around this then so inevitably that will also help with the heat issue as well so if you did enjoy this video then please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below i'm now going to get on with filming uh, this video so uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one